I'm Merit Hutchison Hartley. I'm Frank Hutchison. And I'm Emily Geddes. And welcome to the Hidden History of Business podcast. Today we are talking about beer. Hmm? Woohoo! Woohoo! Um, but not <laughs> not beer the way we define it now. Our modern definition of beer only goes back about 500 years. Nowadays, when we think about beer, we're talking about that sometimes clear brownish beverage comes in a bottle, has some foam on it, is made with wheat or barley and hops, usually. Sometimes oats are thrown in, but that's a pretty narrow definition of beer. Historically, though, beer was a much broader category. Um, if you go all the way back to its origins, 12,000 years ago in the Fertile Crescent in Mesopotamia, you're dealing with no distinction between beer and bread. They were considered synonymous with each other. In fact, uh, Emily, you were saying that the Sumerian uh, cuneiform word for uh, food was, was just the combination of bread and beer. It's the Egyptian. Oh, Egyptian. Sorry. sorry. The Egyptian hieroglyph Mm -hmm. uh, for food is a combination of the hieroglyphs for bread and beer. Mm -hmm. Which I think is a really good indication of how pervasive it was in society. In fact, I I, I studied Thai. And in Thai, when you ask someone if they've eaten, you say ginkau, which just means, uh, did you eat rice? And they're, they're not referring to just rice, they're talking about any food, but it's, it's that synonymous. Rice is sustenance. Well, for the ancient world, beer and bread were sustenance too. And when we talk about beer, we're not just talking about wheat or anything else. It's this pretty broad spectrum of fermented grains of some kind. Okay, so when we talk about beer, or at least when the ancients talked about beer, what they were really talking about was some kind of preserving, or some way of preserving leftover grain. Um, And it could be in any format. Emily, you had a quote on that. Well, again, in A History of the World in Six Glasses by Tom Standage, um, he makes it very, very plain. He said, especially in uh, these early civilizations, Mesopotamian, um, Egyptian cultures, bread was solid beer and beer was liquid bread. They both came from gruel, which was a paste of some sort or almost a soup sometimes depending on how thick or how thin it was made from grain and uh, liquid of some sort it'd be almost like uh, we deal with oatmeal today mm-hmm. yeah yep. about that consistency and thick gruel could be baked into a bread thin gruel could be left to ferment into beer so bread was solid beer beer was liquid bread two sides of the same coin they didn't differentiate between them it's the same way we talk about eating wheat or sugar there are so many different formats of it, but beer and bread all fit together. They, they were a spectrum, not separate foods as we think of them now. And really what it gets back to is the basic process of making beer. And it really can be broken down into you take some type of grain or some carbohydrate, basically, put it in a vessel, add some water, and let it sit. Now, in the ancient world... Uh, They didn't have great sanitation or sterilization, so you would naturally have yeast or bacteria present. It's just airborne. I mean, there's yeast around us all the time. And it would cause uh, the sugars to ferment, and you'd form alcohol. Because the yeast actually eats the sugar, right? Yes, it eats the sugar and produces alcohol. And after about a week or so, you have a lovely brew uh, that contains alcohol. Which means that you can now kind of keep it because it'll be preserved, because the alcohol does the preserving, because it kills germs. And at the same time, you can also uh, add other things to it. Mm-hmm. You can, so you can start adding some flavor uh, by adding fruit or nuts or whatever else you want. Well, everything's a variation on this. I mean, the very basics of wet grain, yeast, and sitting to pro- eat the sugars and produce alcohol. Every kind of beer in the world is just a variation on that process. Some people might do something different to the grain beforehand. They may strain it later and remove the solids. I mean, there's so many different formats, but it all goes back to that core process, which was really critical to the rest of civilization. Well, and it had a whole lot of benefits besides the fact that some people like to drink it Mm -hmm. for the buzz or for the flavor. Um, As Frank mentioned, the antimicrobial quality of the alcohol gave them something safe to drink. Oftentimes, water was not necessarily safe to drink for sanitation issues, um, and beer was something people knew would be safe to drink. Um, Everybody drank it. Rich, poor, men, women, adults, children, 
everybody, every class drank this beer because, for one thing, it was safe. Um, it was also very much a convenience food. You didn't have to stop and, and bake it. You didn't have to do anything special or cook it. Um, it was just there. It was something ready to eat or drink very quickly. Um, it was also really very nutritional. And one of the, the factors that was lost in this move from a hunter-gatherer culture to a farming agricultural-based society um, was protein. And beer is relatively, even though it has relatively low alcohol count content, um, it has really fairly high protein and vitamins, especially vitamin Bs, uh, which were lost when the protein from animals, uh, animal consumption went down. And as Frank mentioned earlier, it, the alcohol is, is a preservative. It lasts longer than grain just sitting in storage might. So it was an, that was another benefit of having beer as your food stuff. It also had a very symbiotic relationship with the bread, as the byproducts of the production of beer could be used in bread, and then bread byproducts, if you will, could be used in the production of beer. Um, like a sourdough starter. Right, kind of like that. Feeding each other. In Mesopotamia, they made bapir, which was uh, sprouted barley that they'd form into loaves and then bake twice. So it was it was this really hard kind of crumbly substance that they would add to beer for greater flavor, but could also be used in extremity as its own food stuff. Mm. So they really did feed off of each other in these processes. Mm. And some of this was just discovered by accident. I mean, someone discovered when they, they'd let out some, or left out some grain, that it produced this different format that had all these benefits. And that was really significant. Once beer entered society about 12,000 years ago, people who drank it lived longer. And having it made you less dependent on the uh, changes in weather and society and uh, bugs coming through, famine, feast, because you had something that could last through that time. So individuals and groups, societies, became more resilient and self-sufficient. Once they figured out this was happening, it produced people who had specialized skill because beer can happen anywhere, but you do need a specialized knowledge to do it to some degree safely. So you had people who had these skills. In fact, it eventually became the, the job of women and priestesses and um, very specialized roles to produce beer. But it also freed other people up to gain mm -hmm. other specialized skills. It wasn't just the specialized skill of beer making mm -hmm. that was so important. It freed other people up uh, so they didn't have to go out hunting for their food or gathering their food or, or growing the food even to be able to develop mm -hmm. other skills and develop their civilization. Mm -hmm. And it really goes back to, you know, first you have your growing grain, which is 100 times more efficient than hunting and gathering. Then you have a way of preserving that food, mm -hmm. which now means that, hey, you're producing more efficient food. You are also able to feed more people. Well, you don't need to have all these people producing food, so now they can start doing other things. And those other things are the things that we today think of as accounting mm -hmm. because you've got all this property. You've, you've got to have got, a way to mm -hmm. keep track of it. And that means know writing. Who gave you what and, and how much when you have groups of them. people working on something, you want to make sure no one's skimming or watering it down or stealing from you. So you kept very careful track of the resources entering the system. That's right. And then because you have all these people together, you have to have rules, which means now you have government. And bureaucracy. Bureaucracy! Yeah, and even currency at that point. Because you have an excess, it means you can trade it, which means yep. you're either bartering or you're producing some kind of marker or currency. In fact, the earliest currency we, in the world that um, they actually have that is separate from barter is the Alula beer receipt, which is a marker for about four liters of the best beer in ancient Sumeria. And I would imagine that they had a different gradation of beer so that if you didn't get the best beer, mm -hmm. then you got eight liters. Which we'll be discussing more in the in the next episodes. But uh, what I really appreciate about all this is that what we define now when we talk about the history of beer or something, we're, we've really been limited by our assumptions about what that, that was. There are so many more problems, so many more things that it applied to, um, which we'll be discussing in our next few episodes. Thanks for listening.
you'd like to learn more about the subject that we discussed today, you can find multimedia content, links to articles we discussed, and videos on our website at www.hiddenhistoryofbusiness.com. You can also find us on Facebook as The Hidden History of Business and on Twitter as well. Thanks for listening.